If you could be any household item, what would it be? What the heck? I don't know, a fan? <laughs> a cat. A, a fridge. Where do you come up with idiot questions like this? <laughs> My roommate gave me that one. Oh, well then it was a pretty good question. All right, cool. Shout, Shout out, out the to basement. Aisha, the basement. Um, what did you say, couch? I, was, I, I said a cat. I was going to say a oh computer. I was going to say a computer, but you guys were going to... You said a cat? That. that doesn't count. Like, like a you couch know. is not a, a household what? item. A couch? <laughs> a couch. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Um, I actually liked yours. You said fridge. Yeah. That's a pretty good that one. That is That's a good hype. one. But like, why are you a fridge though? You could be full of snacks. Sorry. Yeah. I am. Oh, a, I am the snack. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, ladies, ladies, ladies. <laughs> this is a uh, slut. Uh, this slut. I'm not even gonna try to attempt to beat that with my fan. <laughs> Go ahead with your fan next. Go ahead. I like, also have fans. Keep, oh my god. I'm just like I'm. Shout out my slut nation. <laughs> when um, fan when you know like uh when the heat rises, mm-hmm. um when you turn on the air conditioning the heat rises right, so the fan pushes the heat back down. So that's me. I just like. What? <laughs> Keep know. going. Connect it. Um, so you're saying you're like not hot. No, yeah. No. Man's never so. hot. Man's not hot. Man's never hot. Man can never be o- hot. Honestly, just like mix. Always stirring stuff up. Not true. Us. Keeping it stirred up. Um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in to another episode of Strange Flavors. My name is Faraz. My name is Amber. And uh, Shimmer is not here with us today. But as you can tell, we have the slutiest of all sluts. Your boy David. Thou is here joining us for the podcast for a third time. Is it second? No, you because you were on a you were on that that superhero episode, and and then you were on on the holiday episode where you got roasted. Two. This is the third. This is third. Welcome to the Uh, third podcast. I don't even watch the these. (laughs) Wait, you can't say that. (laughs) He cut it out. I'm not cutting that out. <laughs> Everybody needs to know that he's like not supportive. Mm-hmm. I watch like three Don't of them. follow who's David on Instagram. Whoa. Look at this clout chaser over here trying to get more followers than follow me. Follow me instead. <laughs> um, speaking of superheroes, um, you were on that superhero episode. Um, we just checked out Infinity War together, Avengers. How are you feeling afterwards? No spoilers, by the way. No spoilers. Just hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys watch it today? No, we, wa- we watched it what? Opening? Oh, a few days ago. No, we watched it the day after opening. Okay. We watched Friday night. Okay. So pretty much anytime there's a superhero movie that comes out, I have to go with him mm-hmm. because I never understand the context of anything. I think. So the you're fun- being the annoying person in the theater asking all the questions. Well, no, no, no he doesn't ask. Like I just like anytime something's coming up, I just like whisper it's something. It's not. To no, him. no I, I understand what's going on in the movie, right? Mm-hmm. But it's when there's like a lot of very passionate people in the superhero community, right? Uh-huh. And so when they're like something random happens, like a symbol shows up that I don't know what it is, and they're like, oh my god, they all start freaking out, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, oh my god, it's this thing going on. It was in this <laughs> issue of whatever. Like it was at the credits at the end of this movie. I'm like. How are people supposed to know that? Are you into superheroes like a lot? Yeah. Okay, true. And there was actually a girl, not at the like movie theater that we went to, but there was a, actually a girl that passed out. And there was an ambulance that had to get her after the ending of the film. Why did she pass out? Because like people are very passionate she was about her too. Like, I guess. Wait, these really? Films and stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because these were something like something bad happened in it. Oh no, spoilers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. If you know the Avengers, I don't know how you don't know like what anything mm-hmm. about this, but it's pretty much like. Um, Is that the movie with all movies. the superheroes? Yeah. Okay. So then it's well, extremely Marvel, exciting. Not DC. Okay. She doesn't know Ooh. what that means. No, I know. I know that much. There's okay. like these ones. It's and like those Spider-Man ones. and Iron Man and Thor and all of the superheroes in one movie, and this is like a huge <laughs> battle. They what? collab. What? <laughs> Nothing. I'm sorry. Yeah. What did I? Why do? are you laughing? You guys always laugh at me for no reason. <laughs> no, I. She's don't even... doing what you did to me last time. You just like laughed at. No, me. she's laughing at something else. No, because <laughs> she looked at me and then started laughing. What a yeah, joke. I thought you got it too. Never mind. Keep going. Yeah, you're listening to another strange exchange today, where we sit down as the co-host, no guest, um, except we have a guest co-host today, um, and we take on your questions that you guys sent us, or like your stories, your thoughts on things. And hit a few topics that you guys have sent in for us to talk about. Um, if uh, real quick, if you want to email us, our email is strangeflavorspodcast at gmail uh, You can do the same thing there if you want to reach out to us with any comments, questions, or concerns, or send us your music there. Um, we accept anything, and we'll use it in 
our uh, transition music. If you're a band, if you're a hip hop artist, if you're a yodeler, especially yodeler, still waiting for um, <laughs> a good yodeler, a to, good send yodeler to send us some music. So yeah, and you can also find us on Instagram, Twitter, um, Snapchat. What else are we? No, I am. You don't. Know, you <laughs> know, oh my god. <laughs> Facebook, Tumblr, Snapchat, Twitter, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, MySpace. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, just look up Strange eBay. Flavors on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and uh, reach out to us. We're always doing contests. We have our 50th <laughs> episode coming up, and we'll do a giveaway, um, like we always do. So keep up with us on social media if you want to check that out. I can't um, sit next to him. I'm sorry. I didn't do anything. You, you can't do this the whole episode. I didn't do anything. First, you're gonna come in not listening to a single episode, and then uh, you're gonna sit here and like. He was prideful to, to say that he listened to two episodes. He was like very proud. He's like, not nah, listening to he's two just, episodes. He's just here to give uh, his handle out. <laughs> he's like, yeah, by the way. For the clout. He answers a question. He's like, yeah, so you, if you want to hear me expand more on this, <laughs> follow me, who's David, and I'll give you the rest of the response. <laughs> it's like every question we ask him, he's like, oh, you got to follow my Twitter. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Um, have you been listening to uh, all this new music dropping recently? Partially. So, I mean, I, th- I think a big one that people wanted us to talk, to talk about was um, the KOD album by J. Cole. Any thoughts on that? Personally, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. I'm not like that big into J. Cole, mm-hmm. but I thought I thought it was a decent album. That's what I was going to hate your comment. Um, that's just not my, yeah, that's just not my like... Cup of tea. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, KOD for me too is like, I got the message. I thought it was a strong message. Um, J. Cole is to me like a really great artist but yeah, he's one of those that. that is just like i can listen to the whole album once as in, like like i'm watching a movie right but i and can't watch that movie again and right. again mm-hmm. and also like i think what he's doing like putting messages so this album it was a lot about like you know uh the acronym kod stands for a few things but one of them being kids on drugs mm-hmm. and so he was saying like a lot of these rappers these days like uh you know little Lil uzi vert and Lil pump and Lil Lil Zan, didn't he, didn't all he these, like, like take people. shots at Lil Pump or something? Yeah, like something like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, not like it wasn't, not, really, it wasn't directly like at him, but just just something. just at the whole like Lil community. Okay, you know this whole and and they're like really glorifying drugs. Right. Um. So he's like, it was kind of uh, saying to them, like you know, like what are you doing? Mm-hmm. This is non quota promoting this and that. But he said it in a very creative and way, and he even has a song on there called Kevin's Heart, where he talks about the effects yeah. that Kevin Hart the comedian went through when he was dealing with his um, cheating scandal Mm -hmm. and how that affected him as a person, which was like the music video. If you watch it, it's so cool. Yeah. Really cool. So anyways, I um, listened to it once all the way through. Okay, you did. I liked Kevin's Heart. That was a good song. Yeah. Yeah. One of my friends said she didn't like it. So then I listened to it and I didn't not like it. It was like good. Like you said, though, I probably, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wouldn't keep listening to it, but like listening to it once and just like, okay. There's some good songs. Like Motivate's pretty cool. It's like something I like vibe to, but the rest of it's like, it's telling Mm -hmm. a story. And I think that he accomplished what he was trying to do. I mean, he broke like some records on Spotify and stuff like that. Like for most streaming, he beat Drake's record and. I think it's um, cool he had Kevin Hart in the Kevin's Hart video. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it was about him, so mm-hmm. yeah. it was cool. Um, and the other thing is that uh, I want to say what he's doing, like putting that type of message in a video. If you guys are or in a song, um, if you guys are into that type of thing, I think an artist that still is like, I think still underrated is Joyner Lucas, and um, who made the I'm Not Racist song. And every single song he makes has this crazy concept behind it yeah he came out with this video about texting and driving recently mm-hmm. and drinking and driving all in one video um and those messages that he has like i think uh, are on that same level i think higher than what j cole did but um it was intense yeah. it was like all three sides yeah i really That's, like his voice too yeah his voice is awesome he has like uh like a what do you call it raspy, raspy kind of thing raspy so yeah rap. that was cool it's pretty cool um Post Malone, he was he came out with uh, what's it called? Beer bongs, beer bongs and Bentleys. And Bentleys. Dope album. Amber, you gotta listen to this. Yeah, I mean, you have yet to check it out. But this man, like, he's he's so uh, versatile in like his artistry. He combines any t- like he's into rock, country, and hip hop, mm-hmm. and like he will he literally like plays instruments and and then goes on and sings like melodies on top of it, and then like does hip-hop sampling and it's like it's really cool for people that are into different types of music to see mm-hmm. or like people that have are only a fan of one type of music to be like oh this is possible to do it this way right. and i know artists before him before him have done it before but it's cool because he's like not the um not the typical artist like you know he's not like the most attractive guy or mm-hmm. anything and he's like 
Um, he, he's not very traditional. Even just from, what, like I told you guys, like Candy Payne is old, but I was listening to it a lot recently. But it's like such a like, Candy Payne. It's like, like such a, like a flowy song, but then it's like 100,000 bands on the table. Top. But I was like, okay. like Yeah. Like, it's like cool like that. It. Yeah. John Mayer actually says that like he, he loves hip hop music that does that. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, you know, cool melodies, but it's like you're not expecting it. Yeah. You know? It's like still like low key. Like, and ugh. what's cool about it is like, I don't think that Post Malone like years back could have been as big as he is now because we're i think like as a music and like with social media in this um new generation like we're more accepting of just like somebody who does cool stuff and Mm -hmm. not necessarily like oh he doesn't look like a celebrity or rapper or whatever and i think that's pretty dope well that's the same like argument for people that are like fans of all these like lils they're like they saved hip-hop because that's like Uh, that's this generation i'm not gonna even argue the I'm not arguing that save point. Hip-hop, I disagree with it. I don't, yeah. I wouldn't, save uh, save on, isn't the down. word I'd use, but I'd they say th- that they have... They threw a curveball at it. Right. Which I think can be healthy in a way. Yeah. I, I don't mind the... I mean, Lil Pump, like, some of his songs, are like, I get pumped up too. Yeah. Lil Zan, like he has, Lil Zan has the one song, what's it called? With uh, Diplo, Colorblind. Yeah. That, that one's, good. like, pretty cool. Like, it sounds good. I don't... I mean, I don't have to like the dude or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, like, I get the it. They're kids. Fun. They're kids. So it's whatever. Um... We just showed you a song before uh, we started the mm-hmm. podcast. Um, so you guys, uh, if you know Earth, Wind, and Fire, the most one of the most legendary groups of all time, uh, their song September. Taylor Swift decided to cover it. Mm-hmm. What were what were your thoughts? Uh, Let's talk about the song. Okay. Um, what did you think about this, her cover of the song? See, I'm a T Swift fan, so it's hard for me to say anything. Are you about. kidding me right now? Bro. Wait, I like I'm, I'm a T I'm a T Swift. You, you would be. Why? I, that you, was like like, of, like you would be. Like she was one of the first concerts I've ever been to in my oh, life, no. and it was literally like oh, every no. single got, song. Every beta single effect. song beta. was like a music video <laughs> on stage. Like it was beautiful. Like it was like a whole that's music video. No, no, no. Are. I'm just saying that like all that pulls it together, and also Red was amazing. Okay, anyways, um, it's just something a little girl can relate to. Okay. All right. What do you think about September? September. Her cover of September. Um. Okay. It was kind of dry. But I mean, you said kind of dry. It was okay. It was dry. It was drier than a biscuit at KFC. <laughs> <laughs> it was dry. Nah, shout out those biscuits though; they're so good. No red lobsters, but maybe she was like really no. feeling it in her head. Are you kidding? Or me? not at KFC? Sorry, uh, Popeyes. Popeyes biscuits are the best. Red lobsters are way better. No. Yo, okay. Tweet tweet at us for Osti or who's David? Who's or strange flavors? Like, Especially what do you guys think David. is the better I'm biscuit? The cutest biscuit. We need, you say? we need to what? know this right now. Which what? biscuit? I'm the cutest biscuit. Not have to sure, said you sure, like Taylor sure, Swift. Sure. Okay. So Aww, yeah. All right. I so, agree, Amber. So this 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 is equivalent to let's say um, okay train. we were just using like Lil Xan and Lil Pomp and uh-huh. all. Okay. Like what if Lil Xan covered a Michael Jackson song? Ooh. I mean I, I know that that's a more extreme example, but still Earth Wind and Fire is so legendary and maybe I don't understand like that part of it. I think I think she has to be at the level to do something. Like right. if if Beyonce Taylor covered Swift a Michael like, Jackson song, Taylor that Swift would be like honorary, though. but not as big as this song. Justin Timberlake doing Prince was like okay, that's fine. Even though they had beef, that's a whole controversy on its own. But Justin Timberlake is that at that level. Taylor Swift to be doing Earth Wind and Fire. That's just because you don't like her though. Because like, like Taylor, I don't even know Taylor Earth, Swift Wind, and should Fire. cover Hannah Montana or something. That's not true. Taylor Swift is like a good artist and she's like creative. I think that she. I don't know. She shouldn't have done that. She's a sellout. You've always not liked Taylor Swift, though. That's not true. I have Taylor Swift songs on my iPod. I know, but like last I mean, time we phone. brought up Taylor Swift, like you also were like, why did she do that? And I was like, well, she's like, you know, expressing look, herself. I wa- look, I want to... This is the thing about Taylor Swift. She... I think she gets a lot of crap on social media. Mm-hmm. And I feel really bad for her. Like when she did this, it has more dislikes and like... Uh, Twitter is roasting her and it's really bad. Yeah, that's kind of a good thing. Come on, Taylor Swift. Get your coin. But... On the other hand, it's like she, why, like, why does she do this to herself? Well, okay. I mean, she's free to do what she wants. Right. But come on, <laughs> like it was kind of dry, but like maybe she was really feeling in her head. What sure. about Big Machines Taylor, record company? Taylor, whatever. Do, do what you want. 
Taylor Swift, bad but we're, PR. We're move. also allowed to like not like it. You yeah, know what I mean? of course. Bad That's PR what, move. Bad PR move. Bad PR move. All right. I mean, no, wait. It's a good PR move. Let's we're talk about. Let's about talk. It. Let's talk about some real artists. Okay. Chill. <laughs> Lil Tay. Oh, hey, shout no. out Lil Tay. One from I'm Taylor kidding, Swift to Lil Tay. Hashtag free Lil Tay. She's Would on you house rather? Arrest right now. How do you know she's on house arrest? Because it was on her Instagram. Her managers put it on. Oh, what is she on house arrest for? I don't know, but someone quote tweeted and said she's not on house arrest. She got grounded. <laughs> oh, that that makes more sense. Okay, so if you guys don't know, like Lil Tay is this like little. Um... <laughs> How are you describing her for us? She's oriental, like <laughs> no, but like aside. She's from like her. she's well. She's nine. This is how she starts. Okay, so she's on World Star and like all these complex, all these um, big uh, news and social sites, and she's this nine-year-old girl who is who has Lamborghinis and tons of money and jewelry and nice toilets, and she just all she nice does is toilet. she goes on Instagram and she flexes on everybody. She's like she starts off every video how. She's I'm, like, I'm little Tay. I'm young, nine years old, and I already got like whatever. I got this Lamborghini, and you're too broke to get one. Like she says, <laughs> y'all haters like that. don't know. Y'all haters don't. And she talks like that, right? Um, <laughs> and there, and there's this like, icon. There's these. It's her group. You, you actually like her? Hmm? You actually like her? I don't like her. I like. I see it as a like joke. The hype. Like the I, I like the. You energy. see the hype? Yeah. See, I think okay. So there's like Lil Tay. There's Bad Baby, who's the girl from uh, the the Doctor Phil. Catch me outside, girl from the Doctor Phil. And then there's the other girl. Whoa, Vicky. Know. Whoa, yeah. Vicky. I yeah. hate her. The okay. Most. Okay. No, wait. Whoa, Vicky and Lil Tay. Like Lil Tay is Whoa, Vicky's like little mini. Yeah, I know. Because when and they went she, to like go fight. This, no, but she does it. Like her and Whoa, Vicky do the same exact thing. They get on a video. They're like. I have this much money. You can't mess with me. I'm a billionaire. Look at my helicopter. This is a billion yeah. dollar helicopter. Like they got famous for being disre- disrespectful. Right. Right. Like you literally. Can we just like scrap everything for us? Like forget all this stuff. Let's just start being like assholes on the internet. I'm sorry. You can cut that out. But like I'm just saying, like we could get clout so quick. Like I mean, for the clout. Could. Oh God. You could. You know what happened with Lil Tay though? What? Like she ever like. So her inspirations were like that bad baby and like whatever the other girl. Whoa, Vicky. Yeah. Okay. So she started an Instagram page where she started like talking like that. Yeah. And since she was underage, like people uh, reported it and she got her Instagram got flagged and it got like removed from Instagram. So then she made another Instagram, which is her current one. Mm-hmm. And she made a video crying saying like, I'm just trying to make it for my family. You, y'all you haters have family too. Like I'm just trying to bring bread to my family. Oh, and she's like genuinely like crying in the video and stuff. And where then- are, Your where parents are, are trying parents? to feed you. Like, what do you mean? Like, I, I think when you, when you have like this platform, it's, it's so dangerous. Mm-hmm. And I think that like, I feel bad for them because it can be detrimental to their mental health. I feel like she's good. Like, it's really cute right now. I don't know if I, I don't know if cute's the right word, but like, it's kind of cute. But like, she's going to burn out really quickly. Like, Cash quickly. Me Outside, she knows that I went on Dr. Phil, I disrespected my mom, and it made me famous. Gucci. So why am I going to stop being who I am? Yeah, that's true. You know? Mm-hmm. And, and I mean whatever like i guess they can figure it out on their own but it's like it's so weird that these are the people that are so famous and this gets like pushed right next to all the other news yeah and she's she's featured as um on billboards as like best new why aren't we talking about this but she's one of the best rappers with cardi b and Nicki minaj get the hell out of here goodbye you're you're canceled you're done go to sleep good night like hey i mean that's what we did this. No. We are responsible. I'm not taking responsibility for this. <laughs> I am. I downloaded one of the songs. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. This is, this is the problem. I'm glad we have the youth here to speak on behalf. Honestly. No, um, wait. Bad Baby's song, uh, These Hoes, that's actually pretty good. Oh but the way God. that she spelled it. Uh. So I had this idea, guys, that like we're in this era now where you can say anything and nothing scares us anymore. And I say this because earlier today, I got a push notification. You, say that again? you can say anything and nothing scares us? Nothing scared. Like, I don't think I could read anything that like makes me go like, oh, shit. Like I can't read anything and be like, oh no! Like, like this is every happening. everything is like gonna. What's the word like, for that? It's like D something. We're D something. Yeah. yeah. And so I get I get a push notification <laughs> to my phone today, and it's from Time, and it goes, "The FBI is in crisis. It's worse than you think." And I swear to God, if I and I've and I've always been like very like into news, especially in the last like maybe four years. So 
I've been into news even when Obama was in office. And if this had po- popped up on my phone, well, like maybe like two years ago, I would have been like, the FBI, what? And I would have been like reading this and whatever. Today, I didn't even click on it. I was like, what? What does like, that even mean, the FBI? Is... Okay, if... We don't even know anything about the FBI like that, though. We do. But if... Well, if... now we do because it's like... But the FBI is like, it's a joke. It's a meme now. You know, like, oh, my FBI guy is watching me through this, yeah. whatever. And yeah, like, but the, the FBI Facebook is... Stuff. No, but that's, that's who you call if you think somebody's a terrorist, if you think somebody's this. Like, if you have a concern with something, that's who you're going to call. Like, they are like... Ghostbusters. That's, that's an important part of... America, right? But if I had read something like that before, I genuinely feel like I'd be like, what the heck? But I feel like anything could pop up on my phone now, just generally, anything. Yeah. Could be like the worst thing, like North Korea has started shooting bombs. I'd be like, you know what? Honestly, it could be. Like at this point, anything could happen. I, think, I see what you're saying, but I think for a majority of people, it's what we find importance to. So you could see, for example, on your phone that, you know, a uh, thousand people died in syria Mm -hmm. and then right after that you could see that um you know people got kicked out of a mcdonald's for being black for example Mm -hmm. um and i'm not saying that that's not a concern at all but i'm saying that people will focus a lot more attention towards the people getting kicked out Mm -hmm. than they will about like these thousands of people that just got killed right and that's because we just want to we have our own agendas Mm -hmm. our own personal agendas and so it's like and and also what we find realistic to solve like hey, okay, those people died, like, I don't know what they were, I have no relation to them, Mm -hmm. Um, maybe they were bad people, but that doesn't concern me, that doesn't affect my day-to-day life, Mm -hmm. Um, this right here, this affects me. I think, I just mean... So is there anything that you do see and you're like, oh god, like, this is... But but my thing is, I'm talking about like fear mongering. Like, I think that in this era, Trump did it so much because in the beginning of this election and mm-hmm. the presidency, that was like their thing. That was what they thrived off of was like selling fear to people. I don't think you can sell fear to people like that anymore. <clears throat> I think you can surprise people. Yeah. Like you can be like, oh, no, this happened. People can feel outrage. But I don't think that you can like scare us anymore. I don't think you could say something on the news that we're that we can't expect. I feel like you could see anything pop up anywhere and it's believable and it's mm-hmm. like, okay, well, I mean, that's I, I could see why that happened. Like I'm not scared. I'm not scared for my life anymore cuz okay. they've already like pushed it down our throat. I'm not scared of being kicked out of the country. The Muslim ban happened, whatever. Like they tried that ish, whatever. Like anything that I feel like I would have been a lot more fe- fearful for before. Yeah. I don't think that I am anymore. Okay, that's interesting. I've never feared the FBI because It's not the FBI. Being well, no. Feared of them, but like, Yeah, but I'm just saying because we were talking about it. Like you know a lot of people have issues with privacy and everything Mm -hmm. personally like i've never felt that at all in any way i'm just like if the fbi wants to hear me singing songs about like they see things yeah then okay and like Mm -hmm. wants to read my conversations about memes and this and that like Mm -hmm. i don't really care i think you're thinking about the fbi in the literal meme way like the fbi meaning like if the FBI is in crisis, that means that there's probably something happening with the government. Like, FBI is the people who's going to deal with the Russia situation. Right. Like, things that actually matter. There's, yeah, like, but, there's but like, corruption don't... going on within it. But, yeah. that, but that's... That's, some... that's what would be the thing to worry about. But, like, about. What's, what's the biggest crisis? Like, Russia does something, uh, North Korea does something. Like, okay, but that's but you're been making a thing. That's no, been a thing. No, but that's now. what I'm saying. You're saying it's been a thing. If you had said this, like, four years ago, North Korea... You said North Korea, like, three years ago. We would have been like, what'd you just say? They did what now? Oh, no. We're like, oh, yeah, go ahead. Have, have your take, Kim Jong-un. Like, do your thing. Because we meme, like, Kim Jong-un and his size of missiles versus, like... like that's what But that's I'm what saying. I'm saying. We don't... We're oh, not, we're not right, scared right, of okay. anything We're not scared anymore. of anything. Okay. Like nothing yeah. can come across us that we're like, yo. If anything, we'll go on Twitter and make a SpongeBob meme out of it. Yeah. Like you can't, you can't scare, you can't sell us here anymore. <laughs> the SpongeBob memes so, are fire though. Yeah. Like they, SpongeBob has some of the best memes ever. Mm-hmm. Like SpongeBob has given us so many memes. Yeah, yeah. the Mr. Krabs one, the Patrick looking down one, <laughs> the uh, That's true. That's the, best the one. SpongeBob mocking one. Mm-hmm. There's so many. But They're I think so the end point is that I think it's almost good though. Because now I don't know if in the next election you can sell a sphere. That was my whole point to tie this in. That uh, I don't know if next time around their tactics will work because they have overused them and now they're done. I think that it was definitely all It was all a, a PR move. Mm-hmm. Marketing strategy. Um, nice. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Um, let's move on to the questions. 
So you guys sent us in some questions and thoughts you had about, um, you know, things you wanted us to talk about. So let's get right to it. Uh, We go in Snapchat. Um, J-Dog on Snapchat. What's up, J-Dog? He says, who has, who had the most influence when a country needs change? Who has the most influence when a country needs change? Illuminati. Oh my god. This man has no Death. sources or anything Just behind. know. If you know, you know. Oh my god. They've been running it for years. Decades. Okay, Amber. Centuries. Um, so, when I heard this question, I thought they meant more like, like in, I guess, okay, I honestly, I don't know if social media is a cop-out answer, but I think that people, like, who What about put, celebrities? Yeah. Uh, okay, I think the people... Is it, does that tie in with the social media thing? Yeah, I feel like whatever's popping on Twitter matters now. Does that make sense? Like Definitely. I, like, whatever is what people want to be talking about will be talked about. Yeah, and a lot of people, like, that's their only, like, news source. Like, they yeah. go to Twitter for news, right? So we were, we were in, like, school when this transition started happening where it's, like, we started seeing... Uh, news sites, our own teachers, and all types of things like using social media as a source. So like, you know, oh, this was tweeted by this person or like um, this photo was posted on Instagram and they're using it in the news and things like that. And we were part of that transition. I know it sounds like stupid to me, uh, stupid to people hearing it now. Like, yeah, of course. But then Mm -hmm. it was weird for us to see that and hear that like, wait, Mm -hmm. this, like you're using this thing from social media? Mm -hmm. Because it was only for kids then. Mm -hmm. Like people would only go on there for like fun entertainment mm-hmm. things like that but now like twitter is a very serious news thing. people more and people the get their news too. from yeah people get their news from facebook and twitter more like mm-hmm. yeah, we true. had um mariam who was um in the uh in their younger generation on the podcast before and she was saying that like she gets a lot of her news from twitter mm-hmm. which like that's really twitter cool. and instagram yeah a lot of people wanted us to talk about this so the whole uh kanye versus america thing so Ooh. real quick Kanye West recently came back on Twitter and has been he started out tweeting like a white girl on Tumblr like all these like nice inspirational tweets mm-hmm. and people he became the people's champ oh Kanye's back look at what he's tweeting he's this so is woke historical is so woke and then he um turned her, turned it around and started saying uh you know why he supports President Trump he did this interview with Charlemagne the God um, where he talks about a lot of like his process and why he's the greatest and why he makes those decisions, why he goes on these rages um, and these rants. Um, and then he went on TMZ where he was just like... Got shut down. He Well, yeah, but before that he was like saying how... Uh, slavery was slavery a choice. Slavery was a choice. Because they were in it for 400 years. Yeah. So, I mean, considering all those things, what do you guys sort of take of that? Do we need to block Kanye or like what is what all this mean? Okay, I would have said block Kanye like a week ago. Then but you watched the Charlemagne interview. Yes, I but, knew it. But here's the thing: before all this stuff, like I was like pretty like when he came back on Twitter and people started getting outraged again because like oh like he said this oh he's wearing a Make America Great Again hat. I wasn't like oh no like he's doing this. I was like okay he already told us he was a Trump supporter. He went to go visit him in the Trump Tower. He's not hiding this from us. That's already been out there. Like I'm not surprised from it. But I haven't had like good feeling of good feelings about it, you know. And so when I saw it, I was like well I never bought Yeezys. I don't care like. I liked his music when it was there. That's cool, but like I don't, I don't mess with Kanye like that anyway. Okay. And then um, I actually watched the Charlemagne interview. The whole thing. Bef- Almost yes. Two hours. Yeah. Um, before I wa- before I watched the TMZ interview, okay. so I was very confused because in the Charlemagne interview, very different tone. Very different tone, very different setting. But I think about Kanye by watching that, even by the things he doesn't say, you learn more about him, like. I feel like I learned so much about him from that interview just by how he was holding himself and the way that he responded to Charlemagne's questions. For even things where, um, I remember at one point Charlemagne asked, do you go on these rants because you're um, out of fear? And he goes, I think it's out of bravery. And the way that he answers it, you can tell that he answers that way because he's trying to make himself brave when he feels like attacked. So... I wouldn't call him a genius all the way around, but I think that he does have a deeper understanding that I think Kanye's misunderstood. I'm going to say he's a genius. I think he's a flat, like he is an incredible human being. He's a rock star Mm -hmm. and like, there's nobody like Kanye Mm -hmm. 
after i mean before or after the interview i'm just like first of all the the fact that he set up this interview with charlemagne Mm -hmm. i gotta shout out charlemagne the god like he's incredible he's one of my biggest inspirations and like i just admire him so much and we know and and this only goes (laughs) to show that like one of the one of kanye's like biggest moments where like people would make fun of him was the last time he was on the breakfast club with charlemagne where like they were battling and like charlemagne kind of made him like lose his stuff um and now he's he's like you know what like i need to go to charlemagne Mm -hmm. because he's going to interview me again Mm -hmm. that is cool on kanye's part and that also respects like what charlemagne does because charlemagne speaks the truth in in like his world right Mm -hmm. and he sticks by it and charlemagne is who he is he doesn't like change for anybody which is so i don't agree with that but keep going which is so dope um and and that's what kanye is so it's like kanye like he's very conscious of his feelings and he just speaks them and i think that that's extremely important for us to look at from the outside like this is a man going through certain things and the fact that he can question everything that like he questions the very systems that he came from which i think is incredible like that's extremely important and for us to be like oh he supports trump kanye is canceled Mm -hmm. like no no no. he doesn't that's not he doesn't support everything that he says he doesn't agree with his policies. He doesn't even know his policies. That's right. the main thing. He doesn't even know his policies. Mm-hmm. He's saying that, you know what, like, we're overly protecting our community and we're not letting ourselves go out there and be a part. Mm-hmm. If we want to be, if we want to change something, you have to be a part of it. And by him putting on that hat, it's like saying, okay, well, now the black community is involved in Make America Great Again and Trump. And you have to include us now in your conversations. And by being friends with him, it's like he has to start considering his viewpoints his values and everything like that. Like, there's a deeper understanding behind all of this, and and Kanye doesn't always articulate everything in the best way. Yeah. Like, okay, saying the slavery thing was a terrible idea. Obviously, right. like that that's very hurtful to yeah. a lot. And of it's people. not true. Like, yeah, no, it's like definitely. flat out. It wasn't like by no way do I think that any that made sense for him to even say. And I actually think that what you're saying about him putting on the hat and all that stuff. I think that's Kanye's whole life. Kanye's whole life is like being very like crazy out there. Like he has to be crazy. That's that's his, that's like his he, brand. That's you heard him. in the interview, right? He said, um, "I want to I want to take the stigma away from crazy." Yeah. So right? I th- I don't think that he supports Trump for Trump. I think he likes Trump because Trump is quote unquote crazy. Yes, exactly. I, He's like he thinks it's cool that like he did the impossible. He he riled everybody up. He did all it's this. It's inspirational for which it talking. is. It yeah. is. If you think about it like Trump did do the impossible. It is in a way admirable like that he was this businessman able man, to do it. And he and and nobody th- and he was this reality star mm-hmm. and things like that and he became the president. Like that's yeah. That's just unheard of. Yeah, just because we don't of. agree with his political views, that doesn't mean that like it's not a smart tactic. And I honestly think I remember Jay Z talking about how, like, K- Kanye is still Kanye. Like when he said that the first time he came into their studio or something, he hopped on to their um, table and was like, "Listen to me now." Yeah. So why why is Kanye any different now? Like he's still just trying to he's still like we, demanding attention. We love that Kanye. he's been doing that. And and we we listen to his music and we love Kanye because he has always been that way. Mm-hmm. He's not he's is, this is not a new Kanye. I think people are like they're forgetting what you liked about him. And and the way that Kanye thinks about himself, like the super ego and stuff like that. What Kanye does to himself when he tells himself he's the greatest artist of all time and and he can compare himself next to Walt Disney and Steve Jobs. Like, if you don't have that mentality, you'll never be anybody. Right. And he has to be that way. Mm-hmm. Ali went around all the time saying that I'm the greatest. I'm the champ. The most successful people, like Steve Jobs and all these people, like they were crazy. Right. People hated them because they were like, he wanted certain things in a specific way. In a certain, they have certain standards. But if they don't have that, and they don't like let people down in the process like they'll never be as great as they were Mm -hmm. and it's not for anybody but themselves right so like we're selfish to think things like that i think kanye is a genius i think he's incredible i think we should take this opportunity to learn from him and and i've been questioning my own uh values on a lot of things and like just being open-minded to it Mm -hmm. i think we just have to listen and learn instead of just canceling it out like listen to the interview Listen to what Kanye says. Hear where he's coming from. I think he's Generally. whenever it's people in like a, an extreme power, they're always coming from a good place. Even Trump, mm-hmm. he, I don't think anybody like inherently thinks that they're doing something evil. Right. Right. It's always out of like a certain intention that they think that they're doing the right thing. Right. And I think that's what it is for Trump. I think that's what it is for Kanye because they're the same people. And Thanos. And Thanos. 
David, what do you Thank think about Thank you for contributing. This? I feel like Kanye is like a savant, like, so not many people, like, understand, and they're not willing to understand. They just see, like, these, like, irrational, like, things that he says, and they don't take the time to actually, like, think about what he's saying. And that's the same thing with, like, Trump as well. Like, how you were saying, like, people, just because of, like, the stigma around it, they don't think for themselves and Kanye is a person and Trump himself they think for themselves and people aren't used to that because they look f- towards others to think like how they I should I love think. that you said that that's mm-hmm. that's a really good point because I think that's also it goes with like choices right when you when you have for example Democrat and Republican these are choices that you have and it and when you have choices it makes it easier for you to think right it's harder to critically think it's harder to make your own decision. From That's nothing. why, you know, like there's a lot of jokes that people make about things like this where it's like, oh, the girlfriend, like you'll, um, she'll say that she's hungry and you give her all these choices, but mm-hmm. then she doesn't want any of them, but like you just take her somewhere and then she, it's whatever, fine. right? Um, and, th- and that's similar because it's like, you know, when you're at the house, right, you have, you have to eat something. Mm-hmm. You have a limited amount of choices. When you go to the grocery store, you go to a, a mall where there's a food court it's very hard to decide because there's so many options, mm-hmm. right? So for this, it's like there's the gr- the herd mentality where it's like, okay, the herd is saying that go against Kanye. He's saying the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. Kanye is thinking as an individual and he doesn't care. Like the world is against him and he's still like, he's sticking by what he's saying because he's like, I'm al- like, this is what I'm thinking right now. I'm allowed to think it. It's free thinking. That's his whole mm-hmm. thing is free thinking. Like, And I think that's dope. Mm-hmm. I think he also made a good point about medicine too. Like, just because uh, he, he was acting in a way that other people didn't like, that doesn't mean that you have to be suppressed to like being like a robot-like person and just like taking medicine and, you know, he, when he, he said... He didn't want to use it as an excuse yeah, for his and, and, and how when he started acting good, they were like, oh, good job, like good boy. But yeah. okay, something that I've seen a lot on Twitter and you guys tell Is me... Is this the you, feminist thing? Yes. Okay. Tell me if you guys have seen this on Twitter and tell me if you guys have seen this on like internet slash Snoop Dogg posted this. Um, the evolution of Jay-Z and Kanye should show how influential your wife can be on your life. It's the wife's or the right. woman's influence? I think that it's interesting that everybody, like, and, I, and I'm saying this even growing up as a brown person, that, like, whenever a man does something wrong, the, pers- the, the woman who's attached to that man gets blamed. Hmm. And I have an issue with this because if Kanye's been crazy from the beginning and he continues to be crazy all of a sudden kim kardashian's been in his life for the last four years kanye's been crazy for 40 years i think that's also an extreme because we're talking about the kardashians yeah but like a lot of people don't like the kardashians so they're gonna be like okay yeah like they they messed him up like but do you think that's more of a woman thing or a kardashian thing i think it's interesting okay i think it's messed up that Regardless, it is a woman thing because they're they're blaming the woman attached to it, like Beyonce well, made Jay Z great, J- but no, made him great. Yeah, like like oh, that's well, that, the isn't that a good thing though? No, that's, Beyonce made Jay Z great, but Kim Kardashian made Kanye crazy. Like I think that they're all di- like, oh, I, I don't think that a wife should be the reason why they blame a man or like like blame why a man is acting a certain way. I don't think that they can blame Kim Kardashian for the way that Kanye is when he's been crazy. I don't understand that. Well, the fact that we're having this conversation, I can't think of an example where I've heard of a woman being blamed for anything because of a man. For me, I guess it triggered me because my whole life, my mom used to say things like, don't do anything wrong. Like, oh, like if I if you do anything wrong or if your dad does anything wrong, they blame me. And I've always heard my mom say that. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you can do that. But like in the end, like they're going to look at me for it. Oh, their mom did that. Oh, the, oh, the wife did that. Yeah. You know, so it's a like, family mentality. Like we've been told that as well. It, it's But that's 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 the idea I'm talking about. That underlying, oh, a woman is now blamed for the actions of other people because she is a woman. Do you, I mean, OK, so there's also the saying where it's like behind every good man, there's a stronger mm-hmm. woman. Is mm-hmm. that it? Yeah, something, something like that. Something like that, yeah. What do you think about that? 
I think that that's like an inspiration thing. I think that's just like when they say like standing next to a powerful woman is like a man who's like keeping her up. I don't like it when it's in a negative way. If you're using it as like well, that's an, not fair to say then. If it's if it's an influential quote, like you're saying something like oh two people are bringing each other up, but I don't like how when a woman is brought down because of the actions of a man because a man but, but it's not like in, your, in the in, your in the case, reverse not, though, they would have never saying, blamed Kanye. Also, they would have never blamed Kanye. If Kim does something wrong, Kim's been like posting nudes for seven days straight. Nobody's like, yo, that's straight up Kanye. No, I see. No, I see that like Kanye's whipped and Kanye's. They they call him Kanye Kardashian. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. But then, why? But why is that uh, issue of like? I see what you're saying, and I think I think there's probably like a strong uh, presence of that. But mm -hmm. I'm saying I don't think that it's a bad thing either because I think. Jay Z is what he is because of Beyonce, which isn't. I'm saying as a po they're using a positive to then bring out the negative when they, those two things don't align. Jay Z was never crazy. Beyonce, Jay Z and Beyonce are no, just no, like no, a I'm different situation. No, no, I'm no, no. I meant, I meant Jay Z is great because of Beyonce. Right. I wasn't saying crazy. But they're use no. But I'm saying that with Jay Z, he they can't use a like a successful man and a successful woman. To devalue uh, a a guy who does something that's a little bit out of the ordinary and then blame his wife for it. Like I feel like that's a common thing that like women get blamed for action and men. That Got was it. the underlying yeah, thing yeah, yeah. because I saw a bunch of people reposting it, Snoop Dogg reposting stuff, and that mentality is literally like I feel like it just furthers like I don't know. I got Anyways. you. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's a good point. Um, let's do some more questions. Okay, so we got May. May uh, on Snapchat said, okay, so I noticed some of you guys live away from your parents and I currently want to move out, but don't know how to go about it. It would be really helpful to know how fellow Packies went about it. All right, so we don't live outside the house. What do you think? I mean, I, I initially moved out the house, but the best way to do it is be financially able to do so. When I first moved out, I made sure I could pay my rent and my BGE and my car note and everything to be able to do so, but I've gone back in time now. So. I've, I've never gotten the hype behind moving out. I think, especially if you're Pakistani or Indian or you know South Asian, um, I think and for you, you, and you can live. Well, no, I'm saying like it's if you easy can, for you because like you guys have like a chiller family, but like some people have these households that like they don't want to be in. So if we're you know let's but, just let's pay that respect if that's where they're coming from. But we don't know that. We don't know that from the question. I'm just saying like. But this person wants to move out. Yeah, but okay. I think I think you should you could you should um, evaluate first about right. wh like why do you want to move out? Right. I was gonna say that as well. Like first, evaluate your intentions as to why you want to move out. If it's just to like move away yeah, from yeah. your family, I wouldn't suggest that mm -hmm. because you'll learn to like. I like, like everyone goes. Yeah, everyone if, goes even if that. even if you're like okay, if you're getting like abused or like you know you can't take the mental strain, then okay, then yeah, that's different. But like otherwise, it's like if you're if you're tired of like your mom nagging at you or something like then get successful and then mm -hmm. you know make it so that you can move out um affordably make sure you have something lined up and like you don't want to be in a situation where you're like having to work odd jobs just to pay mm -hmm. for rent and like you're struggling you're going like that's yeah. you're just putting yourself in a bad situation you'll be more if unhappy then than you are yeah. like currently if you're if you if you're like parents are okay with you living there until you figure yourself out and like you're working towards your goals and like you know, there's nothing wrong with staying with your parents until you're however old. Like that's, mm -hmm. don't put these barriers on yourself because that's what society says. Yeah, and it doesn't matter what society says well, anymore. Anyway, evaluate if you want to move out. But in this question, she says, "I currently want to move out, but don't right, know how to go about it. it." I think that you should, as I said, become financially able to do so. Be able to see if you can emotionally do it because living by yourself is a huge emotional thing too like can you handle being alone and not having a house full of people can you handle a roommate can you handle cleaning and stuff so if you want to move out then you need to be able to do so so prepare yourself financially emotionally every everything that's my suggestion shivani on snapchat says how do you deal with negative comments or people that disagree with your work in general do you ignore the general hate or do you try to give them an understanding of your goals and aspirations also, how did your family members and extended relatives react when you started making YouTube videos? Love what you, Shimmer, and Amber are doing. Keep doing you. Much love from oh, North thanks. Carolina. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hate comment for me. I'll go, I'll go for you right now. Thank, thank you, Shivani. We appreciate it. Um, oh, definitely. Like at first, it's like a little daunting. Like 
seeing that because it's like your first time entering into it. But if you're truly passionate about something, you'll learn to like appreciate the hate because that will further fuel like what you're doing. Because from experience, like if someone is like hating you just to hate you, that means that you're doing something right because they're jealous of like that you're actually doing what they want to do. Or follow up is: Do you ignore the general hate, or do you try to give them an understanding of your goals and aspirations? I don't think you need to like prove yourself to anybody or have to explain yourself to anybody. If they if people are gonna hate, they're gonna hate regardless. They're not gonna like want to listen to you. Like for example, with like Trump, like people like won't give him the time of day to like listen to him. So he's not gonna like go and have meetings with these people and be like, "Hey guys, like can you please listen to me?" He's gonna continue to do what he does. And people will love him or people will hate him or people be, will be in between. But the point is, just keep doing you. What do you think, Amber? In the beginning, the negative comments were mainly people that I even knew. Um, I honestly just dealt with that by ignoring it. Because if somebody has negative comments to you, they probably don't understand what you're doing. And at that point, I don't even care to entertain it. If they don't understand it, either they'll come to understand it because they'll see what you're doing. So instead of sitting there to explain the second part is do you ignore the general hate or give them understanding, I think that you should just show them. Like, like they'll see what you're doing, and if they get it, they get it. If they don't, like, you don't need their, like, not that you don't need their support, but you could also fuel off their hate. Whatever. Like or dislike, I'm still getting that clout boy. I'm going to take the second part. And um, you asked about... Uh, family members and extended relatives how they react to making YouTube videos um, so if you if, if people saw our last video um, it was called FOB's plan and this is the exact like reason we made it um, there is so so FOB's plan was obviously a parody of God's plan um, by Drake and a lot of shows we go to whenever we go to these performances we go to these colleges and stuff like that um, a, a question we often get is this one, like, yo, like, what do your parents think about that? And like, you know, how are you, how are you dealing with this? Like, were they supportive, this and that? And we're always like, what do you talk, like, why, why wouldn't they be? But our experience is very different because our parents have always been very supportive of it. And like, they tell us sometimes these people are like, oh yeah, I really wish I was doing what you were doing. Or like, I had this dream to be like this or that. And my parents wouldn't let me. And then I was like, this is crazy. I wonder how many people are actually this way. So I put a question on Instagram in real life and um, I was like, okay, so like, you know, have your parents ever held you back from doing something that you truly love? And um, what would you rather be doing? And I, I cannot tell you how many responses I got, like, and, and just like paragraphs of things that like they wanted to do. And I got these crazy stories. So I actually like, was like, you know what, we should make a song out of this. And that's what Fob's plan turned into. It was like the story of, you know, people wanting like kids wanting to do something and their parents not letting them and then just breaking through that and at the end i put the real messages that i received just like parts of them so i cut them off a lot um but there was like a lot of crazy things about mm -hmm. like even like girls having to get married to somebody in saudi arabia who then had to move like back here and then they had to sacrifice their own career passions and move with them and then they like left them and like crazy things like that and just like a lot of careers that like i was good at this and um, I've won awards for it. I've gotten recognized for it. I almost made it into this organization and the NFL and this and that. And my parents didn't want me to do that because of the stigma that we have that like these boundaries we set within the Brown community. And that's ridiculous. Um, so having said that, it's like we like um, your question was, how did like our parents react this and that? I think I always say this, that like our parents always have good intentions. They want us to be safe and secure, especially a lot of like first generation immigrants um they worked hard and they don't want us to work as hard as they did like mm -hmm. working these odd jobs and like you know very labor intensive and working long hours and just being so stressed out all the time they don't want us to deal with the same things but you know you have to understand that and what you should do if you're in that situation where you're like you know my parents worked really hard for this and i don't want to let them down is the best way to do it is like have a game plan that satisfies them in a way that keeps them like comfortable, but also like hustle on the side. Always hustle on the side and prove to them that what you're doing, what you're passionate about, has a good outcome that can make you comfortable, that can get, provide you security and everything. And they'll be good. You know, they'll be understanding of that. And that's what you have to understand yourself. You can't be like 
sitting around and being like, yeah, I want to be a football player. But like, what are you doing? Are you going to the gym? Are you practicing every day? Like, you got to be doing that on the side while you're working towards something that at least like makes sure that that honors your parents in a way. Right. Right. That's all they want. Um, and yeah, I think I think it's crazy and it sucks that like there's a lot of kids out there that like their parents shut them down from like having these true dreams and ambitions. But I think as a community, since we are we have seen that or experienced it, we got to do our best to always uh, put on for our kids. And having said that, like with the Brown community, we need more people in the media and we need more people in um, uh, athletics and things like that. We just need to see more representation. We won't ever get representation until we start putting ourselves in there and uh, politics. So my family wasn't so supportive at first, but especially my extended family. My extended family, I don't think still gets it. But Why does that matter though? extended but, family but that's my point is that yeah. like it doesn't matter and so the it's only crazy. the way that i quote unquote got over it is i genuinely didn't care like if i wanted to do it but i was worried about okay but like this sibling is gonna think this but this extended family my cousin's gonna think this my chachu is gonna think this like i'm over here worried about what they're thinking instead of doing what i'm doing yeah and at that point i've already lost like i need to not focus on other people in the same way that i just said about the people who don't understand it you can have people who don't understand it in your family yeah. that goes for everything else too you know and i think that it's like it's not only till recently that my parents and everybody is like is like starting to understand it and i think that goes to prove that once you start doing things and they start seeing things then they start understanding it and so you can't expect them to un understand what you're doing unless you paint out a picture so just pull out the canvas and start painting boom okay we got uh, Harnoop who on Instagram. Uh, what's up? How did y'all meet? LOL. Full story. We, we always get this question. It's always. so funny, and it's always a different story we get. Mm -hmm. So I think um, I'm gonna ask the question this time around. All right, you ask. How did you two meet? Me and Dower. Mm -hmm. Man, we go way back. We go way back. <laughs> so, do you remember the first time you met me? Consciously, no. <laughs> literally just, impossible. Probably, you got, my, you got beat up a lot. Yeah, I got beat up a lot. My, I think my first memory of you is probably, uh, you, we were both getting ready for school, and you started crying, and I was already ready to go, and you started hitting everybody, and then you saw me. <laughs> I love this. And, oh, I know what this is. Okay. And you saw me, and you, you decided to make a deal. So you told everybody, if I got my head shaved, then you would go to school. <laughs> and I was willing to do that. He was. It's so messed up. Okay, I, how old? What's the situation? I think this was when I was four, maybe. Yeah, so it had to be something like that. I, guys... I hated school. I did not. I would, I would like literally turn my whole house upside down. Everybody in the house... It'd be like 10 people chasing me. Oh I'd be running God. around. And, I, and every Naked. time they would try to put on my uniform, I'd take it off and throw it at their faces. And like, I just did not want to go. And when I was in school, I would be screaming and yelling and they would like start hitting me. Or trying to sleep. And then I would go to sleep. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not, all right, fine. Like if I have to be here, I'm just going to go to sleep. And then they wouldn't touch me. And then somebody would come from the house and wake me up and be like, school's over. Come on. Maybe that's why you're so composed now. Because you got all your craziness out in the early ages. That's got true. all your anger out. It happened. Um, by the way, I was telling somebody this, so like Dawar has ambitions of being like an actor, right? And um, <laughs> this is a funny story. I don't think we've ever told it on the podcast, but um, when he was uh, a little bit younger, like I think you were in high school maybe or something, um, you couldn't drive yet. And he had, uh, he oh does a lot of like God. these extra roles. <laughs> he does a lot of like these extra roles. So he had been doing House of Cards and I had to take him one day and it was it was four in the morning. I had to drive him, right? Mm -hmm. And hustle. And he he auditioned for it. He got the part. Like he had to send in his pictures and his bio and all that. So they accepted him. And so I have to take him at four in the morning. I was like, all right, listen. Like I have to be there, and we had to drive like an hour away. I was like, I have to be there. I'm not gonna not be in the episode now. Mm -hmm. He's like, what are you talking about? I was like, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna like be in it too. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, you're gonna get me in a lot of trouble. Don't do that. I was like, listen. Because there's a whole process. It's four that in the morning. Like... I don't know how long I got to be here. I'm getting in. So we get there, right? And the whole time we're sitting next to each other, he's so nervous. He's like sweating. He's like, he's whispering. He's like, don't do seriously. I'm not kidding. Like, don't do this. 
I was like, I'm gonna say I'm your brother. He's like, no, no, don't say that. <laughs> He's like, I'll get, what do you get? Like you, you get marked on like the actor's guild or something? You get like a point, so I don't know. There's like a system that like the acting community has that's Interesting. just like, that if you, if you get like marked on it, it's like mm-hmm. getting a point on your license, right? Interesting. So then they start calling up people by rows, okay? Our row gets called up and he's like, can you please sit down? I was like, no, I'm coming up. So we walk up and he says his name and like uh, they tell him like, okay, go to the changing station over there. Like we're, you're good to go. And then I come up and then I just say my name casually. They go, we don't see you on the list. I was like, oh no, I'm his brother. Like I auditioned same time. Like, like uh, they were asking like which role. <laughs> yeah, they're asking. So he was listening to other people and stuff. <laughs> and I know what he said. He was, you said what protester, right? I was student protester. So, so I was like, oh yeah, I think I got like protester or something. And she's like, oh, okay, okay. And then she like, <laughs> let me through. And then I was like cheesing so hard. And he was like shaking his head. And then it comes down to we're doing that part. By the way, this this thing went from four in the morning to eleven at night. We're reshooting the same scene. Like it's a five minute scene. We're reshooting it over and over again. And it was so annoying. It was so hot. And it was like it was a winter scene, but we were doing it in the summer, so we had to be like layered up and everything. And this is the this is the um scene where in House of Cards, it's like the most Just important spoiler. The Don't most spoil important it, Okay, some people I won't might watch spoil the show. it. Okay. So I won't spoil it, but this is the most important scene in the most important episode of the whole show. <laughs> and we're in it, right? And he, I was like, yo, yo, come up, come up. Like, we got to make it in. And he, he's not listening to me. I was, like, I was like, we're here. Like, let's get in the episode. So I'm all the way in the front, like doing the most, like overacting and stuff like that. And they tell, I don't even, I've never watched a show in my life before. And everybody else is like fans of it. So I'm there, like, they're telling us to shout, like... His so name's Frank started, Underwood. Fra- and we were like, shouting uh, Blunderwood. Blunderwood or something. I didn't know what the guy was saying. He's like, okay, everybody start chanting this. I didn't know what he was saying, so I just started cussing in Punjabi. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I was doing the whole time. So then, anyways, the episode comes out, right? And we watch the episode back. And he's like, Yo, this is the episode, let's watch it, let's watch it. And he didn't make it in, and I did. <laughs> Wait, I'm so sorry. My about forehead it. was in it. My forehead was in it. I, That's I it. had that as my description on Twitter for a while. <laughs> I was like, you can see me on House of Cards, and, and I show up like three different finish. times. You can see me, and then uh, after Wait, that, you put your you put you didn't add the fact that it was just your forehead. Yeah, I did. Oh, you did. Yeah, add my, you can see my forehead. In House I said of Cards I, that was in my description on Twitter. I was like, peep my forehead in House House of Cards season four episode two. Like 34 minutes, 24 seconds, point, oh 24 milliseconds God. or something like that. People, lesson being, also take, look out for that, guys. Take advantage watching. of every opportunity <laughs> and sneak your way in. <laughs> All right, we got to bring this to an end. So let's, let's end on this. Um, we, got, we got a little deeper question here to finish things off. So this is from um, Nanzi88 on Instagram. Um, oh, I think she sent us a question before. I think so, quit, too. Right? Okay, so... Um, it was another one of her quotes. This, yeah. So she's asking us to react. Oh, to Oh, I her was quote. there for that quote. You were. Oh, look at this. <laughs> um, cool, okay, so exception. She said. She said um, to interpret her quote and if we agree or disagree with it. So I'll read it. All right. It says, "There's so much to say. There's so much to hear. But the voice is muted. The ears are deaf. No matter how loud you are, I can't hear you. No matter what I say, you will never listen. Hearts are aching, but we will never be able to feel." nor better them hmm. you're snapping to that what what, what did you pick up why. that you you're snapping to it already there's like multiple so my first interpretation <laughs> there's there's multiple <laughs> my oh. first interpretation of it is like people not like how we were discussing earlier with like the kanye thing so people aren't willing to speak their mind so our voices are loud, but they're only loud within ourselves. Like we're not, we're afraid to like speak our minds, okay. so that constant buildup is there. And my second, for arguments, so people only hear what they want to hear yeah. from another person, and they don't, they only they don't they listen, but they don't hear. Meaning that no, they hear, but they don't listen. Yeah, whatever, same thing. But um, yeah, so. They, so you're never really like hearing out the other person and their viewpoints. You're waiting for them to finish. Yeah, you're waiting for them to finish so that you can Talk. say say your piece. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was my two interpretations of it. Okay, so you're asking, do you agree or disagree with it? It's both because um, I think, I mean, I, I see what you're saying in the quote, uh, but I think it, it comes down to 
we're both talking where neither of us are listening to each other. Um, and I think that that depends person to person. Um, I think you have to be open-minded and willing to listen and understand where they're really coming from. If you've ever uh, heard somebody speak and challenged your own views on it and maybe changed it, then you would say that you agree with this. I mean, you disagree with this. If you're somebody who, well, I don't think you would ever, I don't think anybody would say that they agree with it if they yeah, are no that person. Admit to it. Nobody's going to admit to it. Um, even somebody like Donald Trump is going to say, like, you know, like I hear everybody. He's never going to be like, yeah, no, I talk over people, obviously. But um, I think that you have to be open minded mm. um, in order to go against this because it seems like it's a very, it comes from a very like disheartening tone. Mm. I think it's like a, like, it's like, reality it's like i think this is just like generally like in the world that's my interpretation of it at least is that like i think for all of us we all have so much to say we all have like we're all not listening to each other but we all care about our own opinion so i go with what thou were saying with that so i had that's my interpretation of it i don't know if i can say if i disagree with it or agree with it because i don't really know if it's an agree or disagree thing i think it's just like a reality like that's what we do that's what i'm saying i don't think there is yeah. a, i don't i think it it's both things mm-hmm it can't be one or the other because there are people that both. there are people that listen mm -hmm. and there are people that don't mm -hmm. and that's i think this is a great way to wrap up the podcast is like um the platform that we have ourselves like you know acknowledging that we don't know everything and and taking in your questions and concerns and everything and then challenging each other on here like sometimes mm -hmm. i we were just talking about this where like you know i might say something uh where i find shamir and amber both agreeing and i might just play devil's advocate and you know curve the ball because i'm like well, there's people listening that aren't going to agree with this one side. So I have to say the other side just so like their point can be made too and their concerns can be shown too. So it's like with this platform that we have, we try to do our best to um, to understand, listen, and, and with the guests that we have on, like hear where they're coming from um, and try to like really get, you know, why they are the way that they are and why they say the things that they do. And that, again, like wraps up um, with the whole Kanye thing we started with is like, do you really, are you really listening to what he's saying and where he's coming from, why he says these things? Or are you just like, you know what? He likes Trump. He put on a Trump hat. I hate everything about him now. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what it boils down to is like, if you, if you want to say that you're a lover and like, um, you know, you want to spread love and all this stuff, like you're, you're not doing that. If you're disagreeing with everything, if you're like shutting out, all the all the things that you that you don't like or yeah. that you question or that you hate mm -hmm. i think you should bring in those things to see why do you hate these things why do you disagree with these things and that's the only way to truly love and that's where like that's why i just think like kanye is in a great uh mindset when he says that i think that's a that's a great way to approach mm -hmm. it you gotta stop ignoring what we disagree with one of my teachers yeah. actually said like uh for journalism you're like you're supposed to be like non-biased so she said when you write an article if only one side hates you that you showed bias but if both if you got hate from everyone that means you did it right i mean or the other way if everybody liked it no yeah because the people that um liked it meaning that that's like they a didn't relatable to... thing though what was this no i mean if i read an article if it's me reading it and another person reading it uh, and I see a lot of my own views challenged, then I can still like the article because I'm like, oh, like I liked these aspects of it. And I didn't like these aspects. OK, well, I liked it because it was non-biased. You're able to do that. Not yeah. That's, but I'm saying like I'm not saying me only. There's a certain population that would be that way. Mm -hmm. And then the other way. That would be like, oh, he said one thing that I didn't like. Right. I hate the whole article. It's the idea of the fact that you'd be challenged at all. Like everybody's ideas should be challenged a little you bit. You should love a challenge. Mm -hmm. You should like a challenge is an opportunity to grow, mm -hmm. to learn. Like by saying by thinking that you already know everything, like then you're never going to learn or grow. Mm -hmm. And that's like what more is there to life than and like what are the true accomplishments in life? Is it to mm -hmm. get a degree? Like what if you got a degree without even knowing anything? What if you like BS through all your classes or you lied on your resume and said that you mm -hmm. went to a school? Like, what are you really accomplishing? What did you really learn? Right? right. And I think that goes with anything in life, not academics. I'm just using that as a concrete example. But yeah. It's academia. Well, thank you for sending in that question. And thank you all for participating in this strange exchange. We always appreciate you guys 
showing all the love and support that you do and we really really appreciate you guys listening to us ramble on about our thoughts um thank you for joining us every things. week yeah for sure and um always always feel free to reach out to us and challenge us um and give us your thoughts on anything that you know um, we talked about in this episode especially if you're watching on youtube uh, make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell yeah. this has been another episode of strange flavors it's been another week another flavor a little less stranger we'll talk to you next time this is my story you know who it is this is my story i'm new to the biz almost three years and i'm feeling so big working so hard i pull up to the gig growing up always studied the anatomy always wanted the parents to be proud of me go to college and pursue a